Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us here today. We are joined by the CEO of WA Kalen, Mr. Andrew Sorensen, who will be taking us through this recent presentation of the business um, about uh, this new the West Australian Kalen delivering ultra bright and high purity Kalen into global markets. And we've got a lovely picture of some of the, uh, the pits behind, which we were discussing earlier. I'm going to hand it over to Andrew now to walk you through. And at the end of this session, we'll have time for some questions and answers. Over to you, Andrew. Uh, thanks very much, Peter. And um, uh, welcome to all the investors who are online today. I'm going to walk you through uh, the process that uh, we're going through was developing our mine site. And uh, you know, we've got lots of good news to share with you today. I'll take the uh, notice and disclaimer as read by everybody and just wanted to sort of talk about our investment proposition. The uh, people are invested in this business and you know we have a lot of investors who are uh, close to us. About 30% of the stock is held by um, the founders and management. The reason we're in this business and we think it's an attractive business to investors is because we have a very large uh, Kalen deposit. We have low cost production. Uh, you know, we've got demand that far exceeds our stage one uh, ramp up uh, capacity. Uh, we're achieving price premiums in the market um, and we've got significant advantage uh, compared to our competitors because, you know, the, the driver of the Kalen market globally is in Asia. Uh, and we've got, you know, we're so excited about this that we've actually started investing in the next stage of production, which will ramp us up to 400,000 tonnes of capacity per annum. And this is what the, the ramp up picture looks like. We started off with pilot operations in Quinana. Uh, those operations are, have drawn to a close now as the stage one Wikipin plant has come on stream. That plant produces at 25 tonnes an hour and has the capacity of 200,000 tonnes per annum. What we're doing, as I just mentioned, is we're, we've started um, processing uh, the investment into stage two, and stage two will double the capacity from 200,000 tonnes per annum to 400,000 tonnes. And then we're going to scale up beyond that uh, from 2025 onwards into new products and, and uh, we're still in the Kalen space, but servicing a, a, another part of the Kalen market, which is the paper market with a, a high high uh, value product for the paper coating market. Our goal is over within 10 years to bring this business to a million tonnes uh, of, of sales per annum. So the milestones from last year was we got production underway in uh, September uh, and we completed the, the plant on budget despite a fairly challenging environment with COVID-19 and supply shortages and labour shortages. And as I just mentioned, we've also started investments into stage two production simply to put us in a position to very quickly uh, turn on that second stage of production in the coming year or so. We've got uh, a lot of offtake agreements and LOIs in place already, and we've continued to add to that suite of uh, agreements over the past year. Uh, and very recently, we completed a, an agreement with a Vietnamese distributor and we've currently got several agreements in, in, in close to the final stage of negotiations with customers in Australia, Malaysia and South Korea. And as, as I mentioned in the first slide, our demand uh, from customers is, is outstripping our stage one ramp up forecast. The price for our Kalen is commanding a, a premium in the market, and that's because of the high quality clay that we produce. That's a high brightness and low impurities. And uh, the FOB that we've achieved year to date is well in excess of the uh, estimates that were in our uh, prospectus at $240 a tonne on an FOB basis. We're also putting the finishing touches on a stage two bagging line. So this is a bagging line that does uh, Kalen in 20 kg packs. The selling price for 20 kg for kale and packed in 20 kgs is significantly higher than the price for those products uh, in bulk bags. We haven't had the capacity to produce uh, product for that market because we didn't have the bagging machine. We now do, and that's going to give us access to you know, much higher margin sales as we go forward. 
Just a little uh, note about the team. Uh, John White is our chairman. Alf Baker is the founder and executive director. And we've got a couple of non-execs in Kathy Moises and Patrick Walter, who are a very seasoned uh, uh, professionals in the ASX space and very successful. And of course, myself and our CFO, Michael Kenyon. Um, we've got 371 million shares on issue, giving us a market cap uh, of around 52 million at today's price. And you can see top 20 shareholders hold 67% with uh, board and founders 32%, um, 1,490 shareholders. So pretty tightly held um, script. Uh, I will move through this fairly quickly because I assume most of, uh, most of the viewers are well familiar with our resource but we have a very large 30.5 million tonne ore reserve and an ore mineral resource of 645 million tonnes. And this is all uh, at a, in Wickerpin, which is about a two and a half hour drive from town. Uh, mining is very simple and probably the easiest part of our entire operation in that it's very close to the surface. It's very easy to dig. There's no drilling or blasting. Uh, and Wickerpin is, is a good place to be mining Carlin, uh, simply because it's got proximity to all the infrastructure we need, such as water, which is very important out, out there in the uh, Southern Wheatbelt area, roads, rail and towns for uh, people to be employed. Uh, we currently have a, a team of uh, 18 people out there at Wickerpin, uh, and of those 18 people, 17 are all uh, locals who who commute daily uh, from home to the project. So that's a, a very good uh, position for us to be in. And importantly, I mentioned the rail, uh, the WA government has announced um, that they are going to uh, fund uh, investment into the tier three rail line, which goes from Narragin to Coolan, and that services uh, our, our project and basically gives us scalability into the future. When that rail comes online, we'll be able to ship the tons on rail. The uh, market size uh, for the Kalen market uh, in 2021 was $4.2 billion, and that's growing up to $5.9 million in 2030, according to the market estimates we procured from Grandview Research. And importantly, the ceramics market is one of the fastest growing um, areas. Our product is ideally suited for the ceramics market because they require very high brightness and very low impurities. And, and that's kind of a differentiator for us to the, the rest of the Kalen market. And of course, we're ideally located to service the Asia Pacific market, which is not only the largest market in the world, but also the fastest growing as well. Stage one production um, commenced in September, uh, 2022 and the total uh, materials mined is, in, is increasing quarter on quarter. And I guess the question I get the most uh, from investors these days is, is about the slower than expected ramp up. Um, we were predicting the ramp up to be go a little faster than it has. And, you know, I think it's important for me to tell you what, what's been contributing to that uh, slower than expected uh, ramp up. The first issue was with uh, plant availability. Um, Fortunately, right now, we've got great plant avail availability. Uh, however, in the early days of the, of the ramp up, uh, we were having some problems with gas commissioning on our kiln and uh, site power issues. Now, I won't go into a lot of detail on those issues, but uh, suffice it to say, it's very hard to get plant tuning and, and getting product on spec if the plant isn't running all the time and, and is shutting down on a regular basis. So. We've addressed those issues um, and they're behind, those issues are behind us, fortunately. Um, and then the other aspect is now that we've got the plant availability uh, up to where we need it and then in a very good position, we then had to tune production. And those, those of you who know the business well know we produce four main grades. Uh, when I wrote this uh, in, in early March, we only produced four of them, two out of the four main grades uh, commercially, and we were ramping those up to full nameplate capacity. Since I've uh, prepared this uh, presentation, we've actually produced the, the third main grade, and we're now actually, as of today, we're producing that third grade for customer orders, uh, and we're ramping that up as well. 
And just last week, uh, we were able to produce the final grade. And this, this is what we call K999. It's, it's the premium grade and also the finest grade. So it's actually the most uh, difficult for us to make. Um, but we were very successful last Friday with the first uh, commercial production run at Wikipin of the K999. So those samples have gone out to customers and we'll be, we're ready to accept orders for K999 going forward, which is puts us in a very good stead because it sells at a premium to the other products. Talking about the sales position, um, you know, obviously uh, we've got LOIs and offtake agreements covering 90% of stage one and in excess of the stage one ramp up. So as we ramp up, um, over, over the journey, we'll, we're just slotting in those extra 10% of sales, which will, will come in sort of towards the end of this financial, this calendar year, I should say. So we're predicting next year, we'll, we'll have uh, all of stage one uh, sold out that last 10%. Uh, December uh, quarter average FOB prices are higher than our estimates um, and you know roughly 10% higher than what we've been, what we we're expecting when we did the prospectus. And I did mention that we're getting some customers from Europe um, who, have, who have visited us during uh, the first months of this year. And it's, uh, it, there's a picture that I'd like to paint for you that these are European headquartered companies that have global operations. And in, in the past, they've relied on European and US supplied Kalen to supply their operations in Asia Pacific. With the turmoil that's been happening with in Ukraine and uh, some of the other uh, geopolitical advance, you know, things that are happening at the moment, those European customers have have decided they need to spread their risk and 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 broaden their scope of their supply chain to to areas outside of Europe and the US. And uh, we've we've received a lot of inbound inquiry, and we're processing those and converting that inquiry into uh, sales contracts as we speak. Uh, and also, we're adding a resource uh, to, to the company. We're going to have a, uh, an office in Asia Pacific that's going to be staffed with uh, ceramic uh, market experts uh, because we see the ceramics trade as where we are differentiated from the rest of the market, and we're really pushing hard to, to market our product in that ceramics uh, market. And that, that will also be supported by some ceramics trade shows that we're going through um, uh, later this year. The first one is in uh, Foshan in April. So in conclusion, um, we've successfully delivered stage one on budget and we've uh, delivered first, first production in September of last year. We're achieving price premiums. Uh, and because of the size of our resource and the quality of our resource, we're going to be in a very strong position to supply the growing Kalan market for decades to come. The Quanana pilot plant has closed production now that Wikipedia started up and in support of the, the future development of uh, product capacity of the finer grades of Kalan for paper, we're now doing pilot plant work at the Quanana plant to develop that uh, additional processing capacity that will bring on stream 2026 or thereabouts. So in summary, we're an emerging major player in the kale market with a strong competitive advantage and a strong brand recognition throughout Asia and now growing throughout Europe as well. All right. Thanks, Andrew. A pretty good update there and some really good images to show the open cut and, and show shareholders um, what it's all about. And as we're discussing, it's... Uh, one of the best sort of mining operations you want to be in with no drill and blast. It's more of the processing. Um, I'm going to start with one of the questions we've had come through here. Um, and you mentioned um, sales uh, and, and China. Um, you recently had a site visit to the Wikipin project and an international visit to China. Can you provide any details about new customers and sales growth outlooks? Yeah, absolutely. The, um, uh, the, the visits that we've had uh, to the site uh, in in the first quarter of this year have been from two two companies who are, have headquarters in Europe and who have operations um, in in Asia Pacific. One of those was uh, a, a company uh, with operations in uh, South Korea, 
We've since shipped a the first two container order, which was for a full mill trial on the back of that successful visit. And you know that that's a very good sales pipeline turnaround for us. So you know we we first introduced to this customer you know, in December last year with sample sent uh, to get to you know full mill trial within three months is is an excellent you know timing for us, and we're very upbeat about um, you know retaining this customer and signing off a, a contract with them. And generally the sales sales growth uh, is very exciting for the business because you know we, we have 90% of the offtake already or already covered with LOIs and offtake, but we're also uncovering new new customers, smaller customers, but new customers which sort of grow our customer base and also you know really are pushing the the uh, the business case for accelerating the stage too. And Andrew, those new customers, I understand it normally takes a little bit of time while those customers trial your samples to fit the specifications of the plants they have for mm -hmm. the ceramics and, and papers and things that they're providing. How long a process can that be? Well, uh, if you look back in our history, um, when we first started out, um, with the production from the pilot plant in 2017, it was taking up to two years to get from the first sample inquiry, first sample to full production orders. Um, as as we've become better known in the industry and as we've secured more and more uh, what I'd call premium or tier one customers, you kind of get the halo effect where, well, if they're using it, it must be okay. You know, other customers will look at it in that way. So that that pipeline of uh, from inquiry to to orders has been shrinking. And you know, three months that we've just achieved with that, a European customer based in South Korea is is the best we've achieved, and that's that's our new benchmark going forward. And um, sticking to sales and supply thematics. The, the Ukraine was a large supplier of kale into the global markets. How much of an impact has that been on your customers? And um, are, are we able to fill that gap um, reasonably fast? Obviously, they're years and years away from um, restarting uh, that production. Look, um, the, the issue in Ukraine and Russia, because both Ukraine and Russia are big um, kale and suppliers and, and, and the Europe has sort of turned away from both of them at the moment for different reasons, of course. Um, so that's had a massive impact on, on the supply demand picture in Europe, uh, which meant that all the European uh, producers had to basically pull out of the export market. So that, that left a, you know, a big hole in the export market uh, for, for new producers like us uh, and for the existing producers like the Brazilians and the North Americans had to go in and fill fill that gap, but all having all of that capacity taken out of the market has has really pushed prices up, and that's why we're getting such a good uh, uh, a good price for our kaolin at the moment. Um, leading into that, probably a question on the K triple nine product. Mm -hmm. um, what are the markets for the K triple nine product, and what percentage of your ideally the percentage of your production from Wikipin will will go to make up that K triple nine? product? Look, we've been pretty conservative in our estimates, uh, saying that we'll probably only produce uh, between 10 and 15% of that premium grade um, in, in the forecast period. Obviously, the more of that we sell, you know, it goes straight to the bottom line with better, better margins. The, um, the product is not actually used in the paper industry because the paper industry requires a finer product again, uh, and that's why we're doing the pilot work at Panana. But the sort of markets that the K triple nine goes into is paint, coatings, uh, adhesives, that kind of thing, and that is a premium market for Kalen. And uh, you know, we're we're hoping that we'll be able to increase the the sales percentage from the fairly um, uh, uh, low estimate that we have in our current forecast of ten percent up to you know, maybe twenty or twenty five percent, and that 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 flows through very strongly to the bottom line if we can achieve that stretch goal. And on the production of the K triple nine, um, does it have a wet process add-on at Wikipin to lower viscosity? And the extra work to get to the triple nine grade is that much of an impact to the the margin on that product? 
Well, the, the, the K999 product is actually still using our K99 process. Uh, and it doesn't add a lot of um, cost because it's run through the same process we just adjusted with different settings. And we have a slightly lower throughput um, to achieve that outcome. So that doesn't massively change the cost picture. Uh, what we are doing is taking the K99, which is the standard product, and then using a wet process to, to further refine that product. And that, that's what we're piloting at the Quinana plant. And that, that is a whole nother process that bolts onto the end of the K99 process. And that, that process not only makes the product finer, but it also delaminates the clay or um, changes the physical structure of the clay so it has a much lower viscosity contribution in the, the paper market. Okay, moving along to infrastructure here. Um, the government supporting the rail uh, infrastructure. Um, mm -hmm. When has the government indicated on when that rail might be ready to roll for you? And how significant is having that built into the, uh, the business plan? Uh, yes, well, governments aren't always known for moving at uh, lightning pace, but uh, let, let's say that uh, based on their uh, forecasts, we're talking probably around 2026 when we'll be able to start using that line. And that's, that's a very important um, aspect for us because whilst we can get everything on the road using road freight, and that's what we're doing now, that's what all our costing is based on. Um, when we get up to above half a million tonnes or after the 400,000 tonne stage, the next stage we put in, if we go to 600 or above, then it starts to become pretty difficult to get that much clay on the road. So you actually, in order for us to, to be able to scale this business up to a million tonnes a year, we have to have rail. So the rail is very important for scalability into the future although we don't need it right now. So the timing couldn't be better for us as far as we're concerned, as long as, you know, they can hit that goal. Yep, no, fingers crossed they can manage that. Um, into stage two development, Andrew, what progress has been made on planning for stage two expansion? And do you still have the slurry pipeline included in that plan? Yeah, well, uh, the slurry pipeline is not needed for stage two. That's needed for the, the wet processing that we're piling piloting in Quinana. So, so yes, we still plan to use that. Um, the pilot work in Quinana will determine whether we, whether we do continue with that work. But for now, we've still got it penciled in. We have the land uh, that we own. We've got all the agreements in place with the landholders to, to run the pipeline. So that is all in place and ready to go if, we, if it turns out that we choose to need it. But sort of focusing back on stage, your question around stage two, stage two is just a duplication of the K99 process that we already have. So it's still a dry process, not using any water. And what we've done is we've put in a, quite a bit of investment in what I would call infrastructure. So like the building is big enough for the second stage. The, the warehousing is big enough. The, the crane and materials handling systems for loading containers has all been built to scale for 400,000 tonnes. We've got the power uh, system ready to go for 400,000 tonnes. The, the gas is required. So essentially the ore store, the packaging system, if you like, everything that sits around the main processing area, we've put investments into those areas so that when... When time comes to, to make the financial decision to invest in, in putting the actual second, like you're putting the plant next door, which is a cookie cutter, if you like, of the first plant, it will bolt in and everything else is ready to go. So it minimises any interruption to the operation of the first stage. Well, Andrew, some pretty good answers. A pretty good update, some uh, comprehensive information there. Is there anything you'd like to uh, leave uh, our viewers with about um, things they can look forward to in coming weeks and months? Oh, look, probably um, a very, very good piece of news that we received just uh, late last week was our, uh, our, our fourth largest shareholder, who is also our biggest customer, placed uh, the biggest order in the, in the company's history uh, with us, uh, and that's for April and May shipments. So that was a very significant outcome and something that you know all the team here are very excited about. So it, it's just the next step in that you know rapid sales growth that uh, we're forecasting, and it's good to have that one under the belt and and go on to bigger and better things. 
great support from the shareholder and, and customer. Um, we've had some other questions come through. There's been plenty of them. I urge uh, those viewers to send those through to us. Some of them are quite specific. I'll make sure that Andrew gets them. But in the meantime, thanks everybody for joining us here this afternoon. Andrew, thanks for your time here as well. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, everyone.